So this workshop's mostly self-directed. I'm just gonna do a quick five minute introduction, introduce who I am, who my collaborators are, and what you kind of are gonna do. Um, but mostly you just go through it at your own pace. Um, you follow the instructions and workshop .formu.im. If you get stuck, put your hand up and somebody will come and help you. Um, so this project that you should have all gotten is called FOMU. It's part of a family of parts which are called TOMU and they all fit inside your USB port. Uh, the FOMU is called a FOMU because it's an FPGA. Um, so today the first thing you wanna start doing is downloading the toolchain. Um, we want to do that because that can take a while. Um, and so while that's happening, um, my name's Tim um, Ansel. Um, a lot of people on the internet know me as Mithra. Um, my day job is I work at Google, um, but I have a lot of side projects, one of which is uh, the FOMU. And um, I don't actually do much work on this project. I mostly con other people into doing work, um, like these two other people. Um, so Michael Gilder, um, you might know him from one of his many hats that he has. Um, he's on the marketing um, subcommittee. Um, he does a whole bunch of Zephyr related stuff. Um, he is uh, one of the founders of Ant Micro. Um, also contributes a lot to the documentation of Renode, um, which Ant Micro make. Um, then down here, we've got Sean. Um, Sean has done like 95% of the work of this. Um, so you should really thank him that this actually exists. Um, I was planning to do more work, but he managed it to end up doing it all. Um, he did all the hardware manufacturing, if you wanna know how it was made or what type of problems occurred, ask him. If you want to know how the plastic case was made, ask him. If you want to know how the USB stack works, ask him. Pretty much, he's the person you want to ask. Um, uh, we also have some other helpers from Ant Micro who are sitting up the back. Um, they can help you as well with stuff if um, we're busy doing other things. Um, so, the FOMU is an FPGA. It's based around a Lattice ICE40 UP5K FPGA. It has about 5,000 um, LUT4s and a couple of DSP tiles. What's kind of cool about the ICE40 UP5K is it has 128 kilobytes, not kilobits, kilobytes of um, single port RAM. Um, and we pair it on the FOMU with about two megabytes of flash. Um, it has one RGB LED and two kind of touch buttons, and it actually fits inside your USB port, so you can leave it in there and take your uh, FPGA dev board with you everywhere. Um, so if you ever want to do FPGA hacking on a bus or a train on the way home, you can actually do that now. Um, and this is kind of supposed to be a starter introductory type tool, um, and it's relatively cheap. Um, if you have a lot of fun today and want to continue to do stuff, um, I'm quite happy to give you more FOMU, especially if you want to do a workshop at your hacker space or your work or you know, a university or anything like that. Um, come and talk to me and I might be able to hook you up. Um, so step one was download the tool chain. Um, the step two is there is some assembly required with the FOMU. Um, you'll need to take the uh, PCB board and snap it into the plastic case. Um, plastic case is pretty cool. This is Sean's invention. Um, originally when I designed this, you just had to 3D print your own case or what I tended to do was fold over a piece of paper and like shove it in there. Um, so you can tell Sean's a lot more professional than I am. Um, and this is kind of what 
the um, injection molding system tool looks like. Again, he does all the work, so he actually knows the details. Um, all this stuff is open source. The full design for the board is available on GitHub. All the source code is available on GitHub. And I believe even stuff around the plastic mold is all on GitHub. Um, and Sean gave a presentation on how he did the tool at uh, linux.conf.au in 2019, this year. Um, it's a bit confusing because LCA is at the beginning of the year. Um, so download the tool chain, assemble the FOMU, and then you just do the workshop. Um, so simple three steps. Um, so what does the workshop include? Um, the way we start the workshop is um, lots of people find FPGA scary. So the interesting thing about an FPGA, though, is you don't have to think of it as an FPGA. Um, so we start off treating it like a RISC-V system on chip running a thing called MicroPython or CircuitPython. Um, MicroPython is a very, very small Python designed to run on embedded systems. Um, you can basically, the first couple of steps through the tutorial, let you download a Python interpreter that's actually running on the device. And you can do things like control the LEDs using that Python. Um, Sean has recently got a thing called CircuitPython working. I don't know if that ended up in the tutorial. I don't think it did. Um, so if you get to the end, um, you can try CircuitPython. CircuitPython adds a bunch of really cool features like the ability for the device to appear as a mass storage device, and you can just edit the Python file directly on the USB key and a bunch of really cool things like that. Um, hopefully the next time, next time we give this tutorial, we'll have a lot of that cool stuff in it, but you know, just in time development didn't quite get here. Um, and so you can think of the FOMU as actually a RISC-V in your USB port if you don't want to do any FPGA stuff at all. Um, that's a repeat of the slide I had. Um, it uses a standard GCC um, development environment. Um, you can just write direct bare metal C if you want. Um, but we also have a Zephyr port that runs on the RISC-V CPU. Um, you use a tool called DFU, Device Firmware Update, and you can load a RISC-V binary into um, the USB over the USB port. Um, the RISC-V implementation we're using is a thing called VEX RISC-V. Um, VEX RISC 5 is one of the most impressive pieces of FPGA engineering I've seen. Um, it scales down to a single two-stage pipeline that fits on something like this tiny little ICE 40 up to a high-performance Linux-capable six-stage um, system with out-of-order commits and things like this um, in the same code base. Um, so we use this um, on small devices like this and on giant, you know, a million LUT FPGAs. Um, so it's really cool. Um, it also has this really nice on-chip debugger support. Um, and Zobs came up with this, or Sean came up with this awesome idea that we have this ability to bridge um, the wishbone bus inside the SOC. And so if you connect the um, debug port to this, you can actually debug your RISC-V over the USB system using this wishbone bridge. And you can actually peek and poke all the peripherals as well. And so he invented this protocol, which is very similar to, um, if you've ever heard of a thing called Etherbone, which is basically wishbone over ethernet. Um, Sean has invented wishbone over USB, I guess. Um, I don't know what you call that. Um, but he has this cool tool that lets you basically use GDB talking to the RISC-V running inside that and do things like, you know, get stack traces and single step stuff. And I believe that's in the tutorial. Yep, cool. Um, lastly, you can actually treat it as an FPGA. 
Um, the cool thing about this is this FPGA has a fully open source toolchain, um, which is why we can just distribute it to you without you having to sign an agreement that says, you know, your firstborn is owned by somebody other than yourself. Um, so that's really cool. It's fully open source. Um, and you should be able to just download it and set your path. There's Mac, Windows, Linux support. We've even had people try and do this tutorial on Raspberry Pis and been successful. Um, at some point, somebody's gonna figure out how to do it on a phone. Um, these all compile for ARM. Um, there's also a bunch of people playing with trying to get this working in WASM. Um, about half the tools already work in WASM. Um, and there's already a DFU um, web-based uploader. So uh, maybe sometime in the future, you won't even have to install the tools. You just go to a website. Um, the other thing is you might see that we like Python quite a lot. Um, almost all our system is written in a thing called MeGen, which is basically a Verilog generator. Um, at the very end of the tutorial, you'll probably start seeing some how to develop FPGA stuff using MeGen. Um, MeGen and Litex is what gives us this wishbone bridge and is what pulls all the SOC together and gives us the peripherals and what the USB core that we're using on the FPGA is um, we don't have any hardware support for USB in this device. All the USB is done through gateway running on the FPGA. Um, a really other cool thing that um, Michael and his team at Micro have been doing is trying to allow you to do this development without having the hardware. Um, and so there's this thing called Renode um, Renode basically does whole system simulation for things like RISC-V and ARM controllers. Um, if you know what QMU is, I like to describe Renode as like QMU on steroids. Um, it emulates the whole system. It's designed to run with um, basically uh, the whole board, not just the CPU, and it's deterministic and configurable by text file. So if you just want to change a peripheral quickly, um, it's just a text file update. Um, they have good simulation of the RISC-V CPU um, we support and a simulation of many of the peripherals. Um, they have a working simulation of at least one version of the USB stack um, and it can appear basically as a virtual USB device on your thing, so you can do um, like a firmware upload to a virtual device, um, all emulated. Um, and they even support emulating the bridge, so you can um, basically run the CPU on your computer talking to peripherals inside the, uh, the FPGA on, over the USB bridge. Um, and a few other things like that. And this is just kind of a little demo of this is the Renode system. He loads a binary, and then this is talking to the LED peripheral inside the USB port. So you're actually running a simulated RISC-V, you know, it reads and writes some memory map I.O. things, and that causes the LED inside the FPGA, which has those memory mapped peripherals um, to Flash. Um, they also have some stuff working about Verilator co-simulation. Um, it's unclear to me how much of that got into the tutorial, um, but definitely talk to these guys if you get to that stage and want to find out more. Um, so that's everything. Um, as I said, self-worked. Uh, put up your hand if you don't have a FOMU or you get stuck and we'll come around and help you. Um, just work through it. Um, if you find bugs, log bugs on our GitHub issue. Um, you could send pull requests if you know how to fix them. Um, it's this, all this stuff is open source. Um, so please contribute to it, please add to it, please extend it. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in doing this workshop at your hackerspace or your um, work or you know, a local university or anything like that, 
uh, please come talk to me and I'll see what we can do and trying to get you some boards to do that. So thank you very much and um, have fun. Um, this is pretty cool stuff. Um, and it's mostly thanks to like Sean and Michael who've actually done the work. So don't clap for me, clap for them. Um, we don't have specific meetups for the FOMU. Um, I guess like there's a little group in Japan, in Tokyo, that have been meeting at their FPGA meetup. Um, I guess you could, like, it's got a risk five in it. You could start as part of a risk five meetup. Uh, there's a MicroPython meetup in Melbourne, if you happen to be from Australia, that is doing um, a bunch of stuff with these. Um, but yeah. <laughs>